Hi, my name is Jared Beeman, and I'm a sales engineer for Tecla Structures. Today, I'm going to be talking about the publish and catalog option and how you can use it to be more efficient, productive with placing components with certain attribute settings more quickly than having to uh, double click on a component and load up its attributes. This feature can be found if you select a component in the model, and if you right click, there's a publish in catalog option. What this will do is it's going to publish this same uh, component or detail in the catalog along with the attributes that are currently set for uh, the component that you have selected. So an example of this for rebar, a common condition that I might run into is for a pad footing bars that are just on the bottom. Now to place that without using this feature, uh, let me delete that out. What I could do is either place the, the rebar and then load up the attribute, or I could do that beforehand. So I can double click on this, load up the properties. I'll grab this attribute, footing bottom bars that just has bottom bars, the three inch clearance, I'll apply that, and then I can place it. Now this publishing catalog option is going to speed this up. So if I have bottom bars, I can just quickly grab on to uh, my, my publish attribute and place that. And let's go ahead and, and just create one from scratch so we can show how this works. So I'm going to right click on the, uh, the mesh bars component that I have here with the attributes that I want. So I have a three inch clearance on bottom. I just have the bottom mat. So I'll click on Publish in Catalog. I'm just going to call this Mesh Bars uh, Footing Footing Bottom Bars Only. Now this is going to appear like it's a new component in the component catalog. I've organized some attributes. So in this example that I've set up, here are the uh, the plugins that I've pre-set up some attributes. So I have the form face creator, lifting inserts, mesh bars, the step footing tool, and the wall handset formwork. So there's there's lots of different applications for using this uh, this these published attributes. You can use it for steel detailing, for formwork, for rebar, any any types of detailing that are going to use components. Now that I have this created, I can organize that in my catalog. So I'm going to drop it into my rebar group. So now let's take a look at how, how these are going to work. So if I'm in my current job or if I'm in a new job, I place some of these settings in my firm folder. I can just grab onto this. I have my footing bottom bars only. Click on the footing and it's already applying those attributes. If I need to add uh, I could be using the same tool for different types of concrete elements, like for wall reinforcement. So I've created another published attribute for my wall reinforcement on both faces. So it has those predefined settings, so the vertical bars are sitting on the bottom. Both faces have the rebar. Uh, another one here, I just have wall centered bars. Maybe that's another condition that's common that I just want to be able to quickly place that. Um, some other examples of this for, for various types of components. Let's say that I'm a formwork detailer and I have a specific layout that I want to use for different form heights, like 4 foot or 10 foot or, or 16 feet, and I want to have a specific tie layout and I want a specific order of panels stacked. Like for a 10 foot high wall, I want to have 6 foot high panels and then 4 foot high panels above that and a certain tie spacing in the vertical direction. So using this wall handset formwork tool, I've published an attribute and I just called it 10 foot high. So now I'll click on this 10 foot high wall. It already has the panels stacked. Whereas if I didn't even have an attribute, um, if I didn't have a, an attribute saved, I would have to click onto this wall and let's actually load up the, the standard setting here. This is what would be applied automatically if I um, if I didn't have any of these published attributes. Then I would have to type in four feet and adjust my tie spacing. So this these published attributes can can save a lot of time and get you closer to to what you want right away. 
Um, another application is I have a form face creator for side. So this is just going to add surfaces on the sides of these objects so I can add on to my columns and footings. Maybe I've got a suspended slab, so I have another attribute here for the side and bottom. So I can just grab that, click on the object, it adds those surfaces out. Uh, one more example, uh, lifting inserts for beams. Uh, maybe I have some preset conditions that I add inserts onto the top of the beam and I've created a publish attribute for that as well. So now all I have to do is just click on the top of my beam and then it adds the inserts um, based on the, the conditions that or how I usually detail them. Another quick example, I'll go ahead and hide the surfaces. Maybe a square stepped is a really common detail. So again, this is just another quick way so I can uh, get to my detail that I want more quickly with, with just a single click versus having to double click on the component and load up the attributes. Um, or if you don't have an attribute, then you're just having to uh, change change the settings for that one component and then save the attribute, of course. So this can speed up some of the detailing for the common types of conditions, and there's lots of different applications for that. I just wanted to show some different examples, how you might use it for, uh, for reinforcement, for adding form services, or adding actual form work with some of the um, form work components that we have. Now that we've reviewed creating those published attributes and taking a look at how they can be useful, let's now go over how we can save these settings for a, a future project um, or by placing these attributes into a, a firm folder. When you publish these attributes into the catalog, it's going to create an attribute file inside of the attributes folder. So this, this folder structure I have open right now, this is inside of my model. So these settings are only going to exist um, in my model when I create them. Now if we go into the attributes folder, here's the file that was created when I published that attribute and named it the footing bottom bars only. It'll have a P underscore and then the name of the, the tool that you're using. So you'll want to make sure to place that file inside of your firm folder. The other part to this then, uh, that, that will need to be located um, when, when using it in, in a future project, because that's what it's going to use to find the attributes. The second part to this then is, is you'll want to make sure that you publish the group that you've customized if, if you've edited an existing one out of the box or you just created your own group. So let's publish this group. I'll just leave the default name there. This is the file that you'd want to place inside of your firm folder. I'm just going to publish it to my current model folder right now just to, uh, to be able to show inside the file where it's referencing that attributes file setting. So I'll click Save. And now we're back in the model folder just to find this setting. Again, this would be placed inside of the firm folder. Let's open this up. And we can take a look at that published attribute I created here. We don't have to go inside and modify this file. I just want to just clearly show you how all, all these settings are working together. So here's the display name as we can see it in my catalog, this published attribute right here. The display name, it has the component ID that was being placed. And then this attribute file name, this is the same file that we found inside of our attributes folder in our model. So we we'll want to make sure to also place those settings inside your firm folder so it can, it can find that attribute and place it with the correct attributes. Now that's all for this Tecla Tips video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or feedback about this feature, make sure to reach out to your local Tecla support team.